Well, hello, Minders. Welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. I hope everyone's having a great Thanksgiving week. And I almost didn't uh, do a video this week. I was going to take some time off, and I still am. But I did think of a quick video that I had planned to do, or been planning to do, and I thought, I'll just whack this out. Might be something uh, of use, helpful to you, and it answers probably uh, a number of questions I get. And that's about riggers. Now, I have another video on riggers. And I hope you check that out. I'll put the link in the video description of this video. Uh, it, that video was one of the earlier videos I did my first year. And it does pretty well explain exactly what a rigger is, how it works. I'm going to go into a little more detail on that. But mostly I wanted to go through what I have now. Because I have a lot more riggers and I've used a lot more riggers. And I'm starting to know, you know some of what I like. And I'm still testing new ones. So I just thought I would take you through that and let's take a look at them. First of all, uh, just a quick recap. A rigger um, is a f also known as a fine liner or script liner. Okay, it's characteristic. Let me get it wet so it can... It's characteristic is a long, thin point. Uh, it does do fine lines. It's not its purpose is not just to do fine lines. It's also to do a consistent line and a long line. That's for the reason for the length that holds more paint than say like a tiny little detail spotter, which starves of paint very quickly. So a liner will hold more paint. It's my favorite brush for doing uh, some grasses, uh, hair-like things or hair-like textures, and above all, tree branches being a landscaper I do a lot of tree branches so you're looking right now at my current favorite and that is a Grumbacher Golden Edge this is a number two and by the way don't get uh, caught up in these rigor size numbers because they can vary a lot between brands and a number two in one brand is not necessarily going to be the same in another but there are a few consistencies. Nevertheless, I'm going to tell you what they are. And this is the Grumbacher 2 uh, liner. These are called liners. Um, I still refer to them as riggers. But this is a 4. So you can see a good bit of difference. And I prefer these to a round because they help me get a more consistent thick to thin line. But also be expressive. Just to recap on that, again, I hope you'll go back and watch that old video. The long point also acts as a shock absorber so that handshake or hand movement doesn't affect the line width as much as it does with a round. And that can actually come into play pretty heavily if you're doing something like tree branches. Because you'll be going along, you know, and you'll get this thin, fat, thin, fat line that you get with a round, but you don't get that with a rigger. So, riggers are my favorite way to do fine, detailed tree branches. Uh, and again, as a recap, uh, they will just go on forever, it seems like, because they hold a lot of paint. All right, so that was just a re quick recap on their advantages and what they are. I also like to do grasses with them. I also like to turn them on their side. And you get this sort of weedy uh, little texture. And you could use this texture in a number of ways, but this is great for, like, ground texture. So those are the two things, three things, I guess I mentioned. And you can go in, you know, and add your little weedy vegetative elements. Okay, so that's what I use riggers for. So let's look at what it is I'm using. I like this Grumbacher uh, Golden Edge, which I mentioned. I have those two sizes. I uh, also very much like the Da Vinci Cosmotop Spins. And I have a 4 and a 2 here. And they're different in size than the Grumbacher 2 and 4. 
The two is pretty similar, uh, but the four is not. And I like these lengths. You can get a lot longer and you can get um, what I think is too long. Let me show you before I go on uh, what I found that I didn't like so much. Naturally, uh, my favorite brush being the silver black velvet, I quickly went out and bought a script liner rigger in the silver black velvet thinking, oh, it's such a great brush, it's going to be a great you know, rigger. And turns out, I don't think it's that great of a rigger, at least not for me. The reason is because of the squirrel hair, it's a very limp rigger. And I'm finding that I like the really tight spring in a rigger. So I ended up not using this very much. I mean, it works, but I just really am more pleased with one that has a little more stiffness. Uh, a similar thing, and not as much, but similar was the Princeton Neptune. Princeton Neptune is one of my early favorite brushes. It's still a big favorite. I'm finding out that Princeton Neptunes don't hold points super well, but um, they still are a great brush if you're not needing a fine point. Uh, this one, though, it held a point pretty well, but it's a lot like the uh, Silver Brush Buck Velvet. It's, it's kind of limp, and I like a brush with a rigor with a little more spring to it, a little more stiffness. Doesn't mean that you have to like that. Maybe if you've tried those brands of riggers and like them, hey, that's fine. I also discovered that I'm not crazy about these really long ones. These are actually both Master's Touch. Master's Touch is a Hobby Lobby brand. They're fine quality brushes, but the extra length, I think, uh, takes out some of the spring and makes them a little limper. Um, I actually got this with the mini handle because I wanted it for plein air kits. And this one, too, which I actually cut off so it would fit easier in my plein air, you know, carry thing. And this one's not bad. Um, I've actually used this a good bit in plein air sketching. But I find myself not reaching for them more and more because of that length. So, again, love the Da Vinci Cosmo Tops. They're definitely, they, these are all synthetic. Cosmo Top Spin and the Grumbacher Golden Edge. Grumbacher Golden Edge hold great points. I have a couple of their rounds, which I love. Uh, it's all Golden Teclon, uh, high quality brushes. They hold excellent points, but they're very, very stiff. I find the, the Golden Edges particularly are very stiff, and I like that in a rigger. Uh, another rigger that's been a favorite of mine, uh, and this is bigger one, if I need a bigger one, has been this um, Windsor Newton Sable. I showed this in the previous video I did. It's called a rigger, but it's it's sort of the fatter they get, really, the more they kind of fall in the category of a, a liner or a script brush, like a calligrapher would use. But I still, I love this brush. So those are my favorites. Now, I uh, wanted to briefly mention uh, the fatter riggers, which are usually just called script liner brushes. Again, the terminology is a little confusing, but they can get quite fat, and I don't really like these very much. This was a silver black velvet, and when they get thin and long like this, again, they're just very limp because of the squirrel hair. And I don't really get the thin lines that I, I typically use a rigger for anyway. So if you're wondering how thick to get them, if you're using for the same purpose that I'm using them, uh, you might want to stay away from something that gets as, as heavy as a six. All right, so let's look at some other ones that I'm trying. They're fairly new, and uh, I have done some testing with some of these, and I think they're very promising. Because again, uh, you can buy, if you're looking for a stiff rigger like I'm looking for, uh, you can buy synthetic, good quality synthetics, or really any synthetic rated for watercolor is usually not very expensive. Here's some on the market that work well. This is a Royal Lungnecker rigger. And I don't remember if there was a particular name to this type but uh, they use the size, a different sort of sizing. This is a five slash zero. It's one of the finer riggers that I have. 
but even at this fineness, uh, and I can feel it on my fingertip. Your fingertips are sensitive. That's a good place to test stiffness sometimes, at least for me. That's pretty stiff for such a thin brush. This one I don't use a lot, but uh, I like knowing I have it. It is the finest rigger that I have. I mean, it is just tiny thin. Very springy and stiff for a brush so thin. This is a also a Royal Long Necker Langenickel. I'm calling them Long Necker. Sorry about that. Royal Langenickel. Long nickel, lang nickel. This is the espresso line that they have, which are good brushes. A 10 slash zero. So Royal Lang nickel has some pretty good ones. Doing more trying out with those. Uh, Simon's, Simply Simon's, which is a very inexpensive brush line. This is a, a little bit thicker rigger, but again, sort of a golden tech line type brush with a uh, nice stiffness to it. You know, and initial tests with these have been good. Some of the less expensive brushes like this, time will tell because over time, cheap brushes tend to lose their point. Very nice. These are other ones. This one I haven't even painted with. I'm gonna do so right here in just a minute. This is Silver White by Silver Brush. It is a synthetic line of brushes for wet media, like acrylic and watercolor. A little bit longer in the fibers, and I can feel it may be a little limper, but still, I think, pretty good. I'm going to stain this brush up good here. Wow, super fine line. At least initially, provided it holds this point over time. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy using that one too. Silver White by Silver Brush. And that was a size, that's a size one. So you can see again, these sizings differ comparatively. This I have used a good bit. This is Summit by Princeton, and it works well. This is a number four, uh, which is a little smaller than some fours. Get some more of that red. Beautiful. Princeton Summit. And last but not least, I thought I would try one of these silver ultra minis, which I've never seen. This is not a rigger. This is a designer, a designer round, a uh, very small designer round. So it's longer. Uh, this has a lot of spring to it. But because it's shorter, I may not get the same control. I don't know. Um, but there again, I'm going to probably try this out. Doing some branches. We get a slightly different color in here. Yeah, that looks like I can control it pretty well over distance. Uh, control the thickness pretty well. which is a problem that you can have with some fatter rounds. It's nice. That's really nice. So that is a number six silver brush, silver ultra mini. Those are the, the newer brushes I've tried. So maybe that'll give you some ideas uh, on my favorites that I've used, new ones that I'm trying and look promising, and give you uh, some suggestions for what you might try. I'll list all of these below that I can. And thanks everyone. Have a really happy and joyous Thanksgiving. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.